Oliver was an orphan who lived in a workhouse run by Mr. Bumble. All the boys there were thin and hungry, for all they ever had to eat was three meals of thin gruel a day, with an onion twice a week and half a roll on Sundays. One night at dinner, after everyone had had their allotted portion of gruel, Oliver said in a loud voice, Please, sir, I want some more. What? said Mr. Bumble. Please, sir, I want some more. Bumble hit him with his ladle. Oliver was sent to work for Mr. Sowerberry, the undertaker, who took great delight in boxing Oliver's ears. Ow! <laughs> Take that, you workhouse brat! Oliver soon had taken more abuse than even he could stand, so he ran away to London. On his journey, he met Jack Dawkins, a boy who called himself... The Awful Dodger. He told Oliver... I know a respectable old gentleman who will give you lodgings for nothing. Will you take me there? Of course I live there myself. The respectable old gentleman turned out to be Fagin, an evil old man. Oh, we're very glad to see you, Oliver. We're very glad indeed. <laughs> it seems that there were lots of boys like the Artful Dodger living in Fagin's dirty, dingy house. Fagin and the boys played a game in which the boys would take things from Fagin's pockets without him knowing about it. Oliver soon became very good at this game. Now, you're a sharp lad, Oliver. You go out tomorrow with the others, eh? <laughs> The next day, the reason for the game became clear to Oliver when the boys tried to pickpocket an elderly gentleman. And someone shouted, Stop! Me! And Oliver ran. Yes, stop me, that boy! Please! Oh, 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 a crowd of people chased after him and he was arrested. Oliver was proven innocent, and Mr. Brownlow, the old gentleman whom the boys had tried to pickpocket, felt sorry for Oliver. Poor lad, alone in the world with no mother or father. Mr. Brownlow took him home, where Oliver was treated with kindness and loving care. Fagin, however, sent his ruffians with instructions to find that boy and bring him back. And Oliver was captured while he was out on a walk one day and dragged back to Fagin's. No, no, I don't want to go back to that wretched place. Then Fagin plotted with the mean and vicious Bill Sykes to involve Oliver in a robbery so that Oliver would have a criminal record and be forced to remain a member of the gang. We'll make him ours for life, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Bill Sykes' girlfriend, Nancy, took pity on Oliver and decided... Oliver's too nice a lad to be turned into a common thief like myself and the others. She went to Mr. Brownlow and told him where Oliver was and how Fagin planned to make him a criminal. When Bill Sykes found out that Nancy had gone to Mr. Brownlow's, he was convinced that she had betrayed him and the gang. You she-devil! Please, Bill! Listen to me, Bill! Uh, Bill! In a fit of anger, he killed the good-hearted Nancy and then ran away. Nancy's murder broke up the gang. Wait, 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 wait. The police arrested Fagin and the Artful Dodger. All right, you two scoundrels. Now to jail with both of you. And the boys all scattered, including Oliver, who was afraid Bill Sykes might try to kill him also. The police finally trapped Bill Sykes on a rooftop. He yelled at them, I'll cheat you yet. He tied a rope to a chimney in an attempt to lower himself to the ground, but he fell oh! and accidentally hung himself with the noose he had planned to put around his waist. Mr. Brownlow found Oliver and brought him back to his home again and adopted him as his very own son. It's good to have you back, Oliver. It's good to be home, sir. Finally, Oliver's trials and tribulations were at an end.